Now, we had this one a couple of weeks ago, about three or four weeks back, and it was actually quite popular because we covered a whole lot of different things. And it was all about um, good old failed franchises, things that uh, where the movie or the TV show was really successful, but the collectible sucked. The big one. So uh, what do you reckon, um, Mr. Aaron, where are we leading to tonight? What, and this is we... an example where you can look at something and you go, whose idea was this? Because it is clearly, uh, I mean, we've got franchises that didn't sell well, but the movies themselves were fantastic. You can sort of see where they were coming from. But there are other examples where a film gets made and you go, who would make merchandise for that? That is a really stupid idea, right? <laughs> and, of course, it was good old June. And it's like, who the hell would make merchandise for this? <laughs> Well, I, I, I actually think that it would have been the the license the licensees were sold snake oil by um by the producers of the movie and they just did a really good job because you've got to remember at the time Star Wars and Empire and a lot of those movies mm. were raking in cash through the merchandising and at the time Hollywood did a dramatic shift to where they realized that if they had the merchandise that could sell to kids they could make you know double the amount um of the profits on the movie so if you were to take june during production and take the right photos and make it look very star wars ish and give it out to different merchandisers you could probably convince them to sign up because it was going to be the next star wars you know you could actually probably look at it as it was like the phantom menace syndrome before the phantom menace syndrome actually occurred where people uh merchandisers as you said bought licenses produced items only to discover afterwards oh that was a really bad move because clearly this is not going to work it, it just had loss written all over it but uh, anyway we move, move on now i love this one because the vile has lended us one of his indian movie posters on the top left there and of course you can tell it's indian because someone is decapitated and holding a, a holding a bloody head i thought oh, i'm just because of my eyesight that looks like the word dude up there <laughs> <laughs> it is june um, and there's some of the different poster releases. You can see that this, like some of the other movies we've looked at, haven't really had a big international push. This had amazing press uh, releases. You can see there's a press kit there on the top right. And then there's full series of colour lobby cards. There was different press releases for different countries. There was different posters. You can even see in the posters, though, they had to info dump a lot of information to let you know what the movie was going to be about. Um, so kids... You know, maybe under 10, as soon as they see that, that's going to be a big turn off because they just want to go to the movie and be immersed in the world. They don't want to have to read all this stuff background to make the movie make sense. So when we're getting this, you kind of know the merchandise isn't maybe going to do as well as the uh, studio expects. Out of all the um, franchises we've looked at that didn't do as well or underperformed, I would say Dune probably has the most merchandise Um released maybe not star trek or modern modern stuff level but out of the 80s stuff they definitely expected this to be a blockbuster and you can see there is maze books and puzzle books and activity books and origami i mean there's a paper folding book for making the spaceships from june that would have sold in the dozens <laughs> i mean um there is the comic book adaptations there's pop-up books there's even paper doll books for this movie i mean I don't know if it was really going to be one that captured little girls' imaginations who wanted to do paper paper dolls of June. Uh, it'd be the equivalent of doing kids' activity books for Caligula, right? It's just <laughs> the, totally the wrong market. And, it, and I'm sure the people who produce this stuff bought the licences. Maybe they hadn't read the book or seen it, like what the film was about. And once the film came out and they checked it out, and they also thought, oh, my God, we are so, we're screwed. We are so juicy-fruited here. It is just never going to work. And this is a classic example, and I agree with you, about well, I, I, I know highlight... exactly what you're going to say about these colouring pages. Yeah, yeah I highlighted these because I I've had the books, but I've never actually gone through and really read the colouring books before, and it's absolutely bizarre what they had as colouring pages. You have got... Um, Baron Harkonnen with his pus-filled bubos and they're as a colouring book and the doctor's the doctor is burning them off and this is for a kid's colouring book you have got the spice navigator and he's saying something like um you will, come, you will come with a meal to our liking is what it says there yes yeah, and, and you're right I will burn away the sickness oh friggin <laughs> so I don't know if you've had these and read these these are all genuine books colouring books aimed at little kids were they having a laugh? Surely no one thought this was going to be something that kids would enjoy. If you were going to do a June colouring book, giant freaking sandworms and some heroic um, fighting and maybe some of the spaceships, but not 
the fat um, baron who is a sadist, basically. And if you saw the movie, I don't think a kid would think he was the favourite baddie in the same way that they might like Darth Vader. No, I totally agree with you. Uh, Russell said he's got the Viewmaster. I was a June merchandise collector, right? I mean, there's a story behind all that. Um, the Mint in Box um, Viewmaster down here, I have seen on eBay, and they were selling for 300 bucks in American dollars, right? And I yeah. really thought about it, but I've long since given up collecting, so I said no. But if you've if Russell's still got it and you've still got a Mint in Box, you're looking at something that's got a, a fair whack of dollars associated with it. But, uh, um, yeah, exactly right. Who'd want to look at the Baron and his pussy face in 3D? I mean, that's just... <laughs> I know. Guess, well, so. there, there would be a very small section of people that think it was amazing, but mostly no. And the other colouring book picture, which I don't think I've seen in ever any other colouring book, is the bottom right there. It's basically got dead bodies, uh, and they're just on the floor dead. That was like for for little Johnny to colour in. I, that just blows me away that they thought that was going to fly. But you can see they obviously had conviction in this movie, and they pushed ahead with the merchandising, and they thought it would work, and it absolutely didn't. So they not only produced um, colouring books and toys, but they produced, Ravel produced a series of kits, which are really, really nice. Um, there is the harvester and the sandworm and you've got the ornicopter there as well and there's some of the designs and you can see how close the completed set uh, kits are to the actual production blueprints. There's one in the top corner there which is a, a garage kit from the 80s as well apparently and that was um, uh, that was one I had never seen. They were basically black modelling kits and you could put them together and they would uh, be very accurate representations of the ships in the movies. These are more recent and the original June, I thought this was interesting because Dags and I had a talk about the, the Hunter Killer um, needle, the, the original one compared to the new one, but the it is still popular enough with some people that these are still produced, the replicas from the original movie. Uh, these weren't produced at the time. These are available now. And it is very interesting because I thought that's a really cool replica, but it really does have a sharp looking needle at mm. the end of it. And I think you'd have to be very careful. They're obviously not licensed uh, ones. And there's your Chris knife down the bottom there too. And if you're wondering what that thing is on the right hand side, that's the Gom Jabbar. I mean, I mean, that's just got the illegal weapon written all over it. Eh? So there you go. Now, here is the notorious Dune action figure line. Uh, this is the only action figure line that ever has, ever will, come with a accessory, which is a cat that you can milk, um, which is obviously a David Lynch thing. I think David Lynch, you know, his mind goes to some very strange paces, and you can see that in all of his productions. But this is a bizarre line. You've got the Baron, who's probably, you know, up there with one of the most bizarre action figures ever released. And then you've got all the other characters, which are kind of recognisable, but not very, you know, they're not very play friendly. I mean, all of the characters, they're sadists or they get killed or they're, they're terrible. And you can understand they were probably thinking it was going to be more like a Star Wars. But the early cuts of the movie must have let them know it was going to be very different. The design work in the film was great. So the vehicles do look good. And they did release a couple of play sets and, um, well, the Harvester and, well, the, Sp the Spice Scout. So the thing I find funny is, one, they only produced like six action figures that you can see on the left-hand side. And, of course, there's a whole lot of women in the cast of the movie and they didn't do any females at all, like none. No Jessica, no Charney, no Helen Mahim, none of them, right? It just made no sense that you wouldn't do that. And uh, I thought it was just a really bad marketing plan. I mean... You would have at least thought Sean Young would have had a big enough star power that a figure of her would possibly have have done well and still be popular with collectors today. Um, look at the sandworm, right? They always had a concern about the sandworm looking really, really phallic, and that's actually meant to be a kid's toy. So you imagine yes. that you give that to, you know, little Johnny or little Gina and go, yeah, have some fun with that. I mean, <laughs> nah. <laughs> so here is just the thing that says to me they had no idea Again, what kid would have gone, oh, mum, I, um, I want a June-themed party. So can you get the party favours that have the June plate and the June napkins and I want all my friends to wear June party hats? That's just never going to happen. And the most bizarre one there is I think the June bed sheets. Surely yeah. that is for the kid that asked for Return of the Jedi bed sheets and their mum had no idea what was what and just went and got anything that was science fiction and it led to a very disappointing Christmas morning. You've also got the uh, the June jigsaws there, which, again, are 
they're nice jigsaws if you're into Dune, but they're basically of sadists and, um, you know, mm. scenes in the movie. Like, you know, the poster of the movie would have been a good jigsaw or some of the, the spaceships or a tasteful picture of um, them riding the worms or something like that. But but those ones, I don't know how what they were going to sell. But puffy stickers. So, well, I, yeah. I, was, I was collecting at the time, and I've got to say, I really don't remember much Dune merchandise here beyond the cover of magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the irony is, of course, if there was a June uh, party uh, with that theme today, I mean, I think it'd be absolutely fantastic. But even I would acknowledge it's definitely not for children. So <laughs> here we have um, the June soundtrack, and again, what blows me away? There's the soundtrack, and it is a good soundtrack. It's got some really interesting stuff by Toto, and it's it's one of those sort of very '80s soundtrack, but it's good. Mm. But what surprises me, they have two of those storybooks where you know turn the page every time, you know, a cat gets milked or whatever the sound is they use <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to, to turn the page. So they really didn't know the audience it was going to be pitched at, I don't think. There's the June trading cards, which, again, I don't think were released here. And they, they used to be quite reasonable and easy to pick up on eBay, but I was looking and even they've sort of got up in value. And the last thing which I was talking about earlier, they released a June paper doll set so mm. paper dolls are one of those things for people who don't know you get like uh, a picture of a guy or a girl in his undies and then you get all these different um pictures of clothes that you can cut out and then put over the top of them and i guess they were sort of one of those cheaper toys for, for mainly girls uh really they were books you could get but i just don't think june would have sold one of these like who would have wanted a june it was only as an adult collector who saw the irony of it surely no one could have said oh i want to dress up the fremen in their steel suits and stuff like that no, I uh, I totally agree with you. It was, a, I think, a classic. Yeah, you're right. See, a Baron Harkonnen paper doll, just not happening, is it? So it's just got right. wrong on a lot of levels. And, uh, yeah, that was one that they, the merchandisers and the marketers and all the, what do you call it, the people who do the, the market research, they cocked up big time. 